Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard. This time we're gonna be slapping up uh, this big guy right here with my uh, bandsaw mill that I built and designed right here in my driveway. If you didn't see it already, I did a video on going out and picking up this large log and getting it onto my trailer, bringing it back here, and then getting it onto the mill. So if you haven't seen that already, I'll leave a link to that down in the description below and up in the cards. So as always, we'll take a look around the log a little bit, see what, kind of what we're dealing with, and then we'll get into the actual sawing process. Just a little bit about the size of this thing. It is close to four feet wide down here. It's about 46 inches at the butt. It tapers to about 42 in the middle here, and then goes back out to right around four feet up here at the five crotches. Yeah, five, that should be pretty exciting. <laughs> so taking a quick walk around the log, as we get up through here, we can start seeing some of these crotches. We have basically two pairs of Ys and then an accessory limb, I guess you can call it. So we have a pair of crotches here, a pair of crotches here, and this extra guy right there. Let's walk around this side. So the cut orientation on this is, uh, I guess, interesting in a sense because it could really be either this way or turn nine degrees from here cutting it this way so we're cutting through here for instance 90 degrees from what it is right now we would have these two crotches coming together through all of this furrowed area through here which would produce some pretty interesting things but it would have this kind of odd shape where the slab itself would have this extra material up here and then it'd be shorter down here so it wouldn't be as practical as the way that's oriented right now at least in my opinion so I'm looking at it from above you can see we still have a crotch kind of orientation here with these two larger limbs and they'll come together through here and this would give us a more I guess uniform shape of the slab where it has you know an actual end point as opposed to cutting the other way you would have a long section and then the slab would kind of start again over here kind of turn around here we also have this old limb here which might produce something interesting as well but you can see as well how the tree grew in a little bit of a spiral so you have a little bit of spiral grain here as well which should further make things a little more interesting. So with this extra limb up here, that's just gonna give us a little bit of bonus, I guess. You might see a little bit of figure popping through at that point, but overall the figure will come from the two main limbs. And if you think about the crotches as we come through, the two main ones, we'll essentially get the same thing down here, but we'll get just slightly shorter slabs. So instead of a full 10 feet long, these will be somewhere around maybe nine, eight and a half or so, and we'll still have some really nice crotch figure as a result of those limbs being there as well. So let's have decided to slice this guy up. I think it'd be beautiful either way. You're gonna get some crazy interesting things if you were to cut it the other way uh, from here, from these little furrows as well. And you got a lot more interesting things up here. But I think coming through here will be slightly more practical, which isn't something that I say super often. <laughs> Another little bit on setup. You can see I've raised this side of the log up about uh, two inches. And that's to bring it more in line with the limbs that are protruding down here kind of making the log a little bit on the angle as it was sitting before. So this makes the top of the cut a lot more even and it'll put the cut path in line with the center of the tree. So probably one of the more straightforward decision-making processes on cutting a log. I don't really think you could really cut this in a way that wouldn't be that great as long as you're cutting and playing with either of the crotch directions. I think they'd yield pretty awesome slabs regardless. I'm just more leaning towards this practicality standpoint this time. So for the first cut, probably gonna come in right around here, which is about 40 inches off the bed. That should give me a wide enough slab for that top one to go down onto my foundations and give me enough contact with those. So I'll go ahead and make that first cut and we'll see what we got inside of here. So I got some, uh, I got some aluminum nails. I wasn't too worried about those. Aluminum's nothing. So let's, uh, let's try and pull off this top waist piece and see what, uh, what's inside. So looks like we already have a good amount of figure through here around these bark inclusions. But uh, let's take a quick, quick look. Ah, so we're starting to see a little bit of figure poking in through here around this bark inclusion. 
and some more up through here, which is super nice. Pretty uh, clear and uneventful stuff, except for this one event right here. It's like either a couple of nails or maybe something else like that. But uh, yeah, no problem. Those are steel, not aluminum like the other ones were. <laughs> So I am reasonably sure that uh, we hit something here in this log. Not really sure exactly what it is, but uh, that blade was really struggling to get through this section right here. It is uh, pretty hot, and I guess there's a missing tooth there. So I'm thinking whatever it is, I cut through it, but this blade is trying to walk up. So we're gonna try and get this top slab off of here get this blade out of here and get a new one on there and we'll try and continue this cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this first slab out of the way so that I can uh, pull this blade back out of here and put a new blade on it and try and continue this cut a bit more. I've already set up the area where this thing is gonna live over behind the shed with the other stacks so I can use my trailer and the arch to just drive it over to the stack. Oh yeah. So there is at least some kind of spike in this one or some kind of bolt or something. So on this cut, I cut through whatever that was. That was probably like a lag bolt or something. So I'm guessing that down on the next cut is maybe what this was holding into the tree or maybe another one of these. We'll see, I guess. So I'm gonna start bringing the blade back in and on this cut, you can see how I, I stopped after I passed through whatever I cut through here. You can see the blade is starting to travel up. So that's why I stopped right here because that blade was drifting. So we're gonna bring the blade back into about here, then turn it back on since we should be through whatever I cut through back over here. And that should help kind of even this back out, remove this kind of dip and then we'll continue all the way straight through the cut. At least that is the theory at this point. So it sounded like I hit uh, like two more things along the way, but uh, that's, I think I'm gonna pull the slab out of here and we'll take a look and see what happened over here and if I really did hit something else. So I could hear the pitch and the blade change, kind of squeal a couple times in there. So that sounded like possibly I hit something else. Oh yeah, something big, <laughs> something smaller. <laughs> Yeah, there's, uh, there's some stuff in this log. 
So actually I just saw these two. So there are, looks like there's two spikes here, there's one here. And then, so this is where I stopped before and restarted. And then coming down through here, there are two more. So the smaller nail here, which is maybe like a, I don't know, 16 penny framing nail is two of those here. And then these look like some much larger kind of spikes or things. So let me just pull this back a little further. And there's also a nail up here. And something else going on there. <laughs> Woo! So this surface is the, I guess, the mating side of the one that's on the log right now. So we can take a look and see how much stuff was actually cut through. Because this is going to be a book match of what's up there right now. So everything in this slab is what's on the surface of the log that's on the mill right now. A lot of, a lot of things in here, that's for sure. So starting down here, we have a small, it's probably like a 16 penny nail or something. And there's another, uh, there it is, 16 penny there. This is some kind of larger spike or bolt, just like uh, these two here. So there's three of those on a row here. There is nothing exposed here yet, but there is a lot of standing here. So that tells me there's probably something further into the log. that will probably hit on the next cut. <laughs> this is, uh, looks like almost the side of a, we have a bolt head or something where you have the shank here and that's the head. It's pretty big, whatever that is. And then we got another kind of 16 penny nail here and another one there. And then this is just wood down here. <laughs> just some wood. So I wasn't paying attention. So this is actually pointing the wrong way for the stacks. So I'm just going to spin this thing around 180 degrees and then I can pick it up with the trailer, drive it over the stack, hit my head on the hook there and hopefully I can get it. There we go. There you go. All right, so here we are, day two. Yesterday I got out of here, probably like 3.30 or so. It was raining most of the day and I had wanted to go out here to get started uh, all day, waiting for it to stop raining. Now it's the next day, it's quite a lot nicer out. And uh, yeah, it's like one o'clock. So got a couple hours in yesterday. Now I'll keep going and see what happens here. So this next cut, I'm gonna drop down and take a three inch thick slice, which should do kind of two things. Hopefully it'll get me through most of the, the bolts and the steel. And because what actually happened is I have a little bit of a dip right here, that's going to put more material into the slab so that when it gets surfaced, um, it'll surface down to the dip and you'll have the same finished thickness as the other stuff, which is gonna be cut at about two and a half inches. So what it actually looks like is where I thought the blade was rising into the cut. It was actually rising because it had dipped previously as I was trying to get through that steel or right after I got through that steel and the rising was the blade just trying to right itself back onto a straight path again. But anywho, sawing stuff with all of this fun steel in it always makes for a more exciting adventure, which I do certainly enjoy. So I know I'll get the question as I always do is why don't I bother trying to pull the steel out or why do I even bother sawing these logs at all? And again, this is mostly for the adventure more than anything. I just really, really enjoy the struggle because it makes it a lot more interesting for me to be out here having fun. Now, the reason I don't want to pull the steel out is because that damages the wood around it quite a lot. Even if you're able to pull something straight out, you're still likely to get a good amount of damage around those fibers. So I prefer to leave them in there so that if these were turned into like a tabletop, for instance, in the future, that steel could be left embedded and be part of the story of the, the tree and the slab itself. And it's not a huge deal as far as the steel being in there when it comes to surfacing this material, because something this big, if you're gonna use a hole for a tabletop, you're likely gonna flatten it with a router sled. And with a router sled, it's very easy to avoid those areas that have the steel in there. So you'll surface the whole thing with the router sled, avoid those areas, and then you'll come back and just use a belt sander or some kind of orbital sander to bring down that area with the steel in it down flush to the rest of the slab. And then you have a surface slab with some pretty sweet embedded pieces of steel in it. Okay, so I didn't feel anything cutting through there. So I don't think I hit anything. The cut line looks very straight. So that's a good sign. So before I continue, I think I'll pull this slab back 
and take a look just to make sure because that blade is uh, feeling kind of dull, especially after cutting through the uh, metal in that last slab and uh, it's cutting pretty slow. There's some staining here, but other than that, I don't see any uh, signs of any metal in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and guess that we are through that now. I gotta flip the slab over. <laughs> that should be very interesting. All right, let's take a look at this guy. Looks like I got some cool bark inclusion on the top there. Oh, I love wood. <laughs> it's so beautiful. So this one's starting to get into some of the interesting stuff. So things on here are a little more, shall we say, subdued. <laughs> we do have some interesting figure around this knot here. This is some iron staining from, you know, further down the slab where that nail was or that spike was or whatever, but some really cool figuring above here. We're starting to get into the crotch figure here, a little bit around this bark inclusion. So that's just gorgeous. And we have some older limbs towards the top here, which produce some really interesting stuff. Down here is all pretty well just clear. There's some fun, interesting grain patterns. Not a whole lot going on, but as far as this basic wood goes, this is it. <laughs> a little bit of uh, vanilla wood with some interesting things sprinkled in here and there. And just to get an idea on width, down here we're at about 32 inches. Coming up through here, it's about 29. And then up through here, we're up around three feet. So a pretty decent size uh, slab here. Maybe a nice big old 10 foot long desktop or something. <laughs> So now that I know we're at least through all that steel, I'm gonna go ahead and swap out the blade for a fresh one and then make sequential cuts until uh, bottom out the soft throat as always. And then we'll start digging through all these slabs. Yeah, I definitely hit something else once again. Surprised I made it through that cut, but it looks like I made it pretty well out of there without wandering too much. So I'm gonna pull this slab back again and see what I'm kind of dealing with. I also uh, wallowed out the slot in the winch feed handle too, so can't feed it anymore. <laughs> so that's what we got this time. Another uh, large something. But I guess that was enough to put the blade on a little bit of a, <laughs> a dive course because we have a nice big dip through here before it started to ride itself out again. And it's, it's a little, little wavy through the rest of the cut, but not terrible. But there's a pretty significant dip right here. All right, let's see what we got here. Water. That was terrible. See, I've got this nice high spot here where that blade drifted after that uh, bit of steel. <laughs> Whoop. Whoop. There we go. Oh, down here with this beautiful bark inclusion. That's incredible. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So here's a closer look at that crotch with the bark inclusion. Some really beautiful grain around this bark inclusion. You got a little bit of figure coming up through here. The same thing over here, symmetrical. There is the uh, foreign steel object. <laughs> we got some cool figure around these knots here in the middle. And then it comes back to a fairly standard, simple, uh, clear, straight green stuff towards the base of the tree. <laughs> so uh, I guess this is day three now. <laughs> so I got a little bit done yesterday on this log. Ended up spending the rest of the afternoon doing some other stuff, including fixing up my little crank handle thing and that got me some time over on the Bridgeport playing with that thing. So all I wanted to do here was just create a bigger block that would slide onto the winch and provide a little more or a little bit better contact area with that piece so that it wouldn't uh, end up getting all wallowed out. 
again. <laughs> so using the bridge port is uh, a lot of fun. I really, really enjoy it. And of course, I don't have a whole lot of experience with it. So little projects like this where there's only like one thing that actually matters as far as precision goes, just the width of the slot, the length isn't a huge deal. The actual position inside the part doesn't really matter a whole lot. So just being able to be at the milling machine, just getting a feel for the handles, how the tools should feel as they're cutting, things like that, I think is uh, super beneficial, especially for someone like me that hasn't done a whole lot of stuff on that machine. So all I was aiming for was just to create a slot that was uh, 10 thousandths of an inch oversized for the receiver on the winch. That should allow this thing to slide on and off really easily, but still be precise enough or be tight enough that there isn't a whole lot of slop there so that the wear will be nice and even and I guess the contact between the winch part and my handle is as big as possible instead of being a concentrated force like it was on the existing one. So the block just gets welded to the, uh, the existing crank handle and now I have a much bigger contact surface to go onto the actual crank. So I've got a fresh blade on the saw now. The old one that went through this cut is just blunted a little bit. It still feels like a sharp enough. I'll be able to use it in the future for cutting some smaller stuff. So we'll see that blade back when we cut the walnut that's on my trailer right now. But for wide cuts like this, I still like to have a sharp blade on there because it's really not worth it to keep running a blade that might be a little too dull for this with when the board cells are quite valuable. So hopefully this time we're through all of the steel. Uh, we will see, I guess. <laughs> so that one felt uh, pretty good. Didn't feel like I hit anything or had any kind of hiccups along the way. So I guess we're through all of that steel now. So I'm gonna go ahead and reposition and we'll just keep cutting until I can't cut anymore and bottom up the throw the saw. So that is, uh, we got here, one, two, three, four, five, six slabs. So let's, uh, let's start moving slabs. 
I think with this log, what I'll do is just chase the cut. So I'll pull a slab off, get it stacked, and then make another cut. One thing to keep in mind with this log right now is the only thing holding it in position is its own weight. The more slabs I remove from it, the less it weighs, the more likely it is to move around. And we don't want it to move at all during these cuts or else we'll end up with some kind of weird tapered cut. We'll have to do it too many times, though it only looks like I have enough material to get maybe three more slabs out of it before I run into some partial length cuts. So I was a little bit wrong. It looks like there's a small nail right through here that we hit, but uh, couldn't feel it, so <laughs> not a problem. Those small things, not a huge deal. It's kind of funny that you can cut through small stuff like this and continue cutting. So after this, there's still five cuts made on this log, even for hitting that nail. So the blade likely didn't even feel that nail. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, this bark inclusion. This is the stuff that I like. Okay, so down here is the staining from around that piece of a nail or whatever. It's a little bit down in there. I think the blade pulled a chunk of it out of there, but that's kind of a cool little detail here down on this end where the grain is kind of cool. You got a little bit of, there's a little bit of figure poking through here on the edges and just some really cool, just general color and stuff coming through the middle. And then we get up here, oh, oh, this bark inclusion has some beautiful grain around it. There's just some crazy stuff happening around here. That is just absolutely beautiful. And then up here we're greeted with some nice crotch figure around this knot. And it's just beautiful too. So overall, just a really cool piece of wood. Oh, uh, they're all cool. <laughs> I love wood. So I'm heading back to the saw, make another cut, and then we'll pull another slab off. And it's just gonna be that process until all the cuts are made. And all we've left to do is move and gawk at slabs. All right, this one's going to be pretty darn nice. I've got a feeling. Let's see. Huzzah! Kind of missed. <laughs> oh. Oh. We got some really cool bark inclusion and figure around that. And then the figure around the main bark inclusion in the middle. Still there. Oh. So just to throw some numbers around down here. We're at 38 inches from here to here between the bark. Up through the middle is a narrow spot here, I think. That's about 34. And then over here is about 35. Another kind of narrow spot up here, 32 or so. And it kind of flares back out again at 36. That's a nice, uh, that's nice. <laughs> so down here on this end, things are pretty clear and clean, not a whole lot of crazy stuff going on. There's some interesting things here, which is kind of cool. A little bit of curl towards the outside like before. And then down through here, we've got a lot of cool stuff happening around these knots. More really cool like uh, grayish browns happening around this bark inclusion. This crazy thing right here. Love this. And there's a little bit of crotch figure right up there. But uh, ho ho. I'm liking these things. Yep, hit something else again. There's several teeth missing. One, two, three, four, five, six, eleven. Okay. <laughs> Woo! More stuff. So off the side, what I want to do if I want to make another cut here, you can see them all the way down to right here on this kind of like on a low spot in here. So I could end up with, you know, some shorter slabs from this side, or I can try and come through here and make another cut and get a piece, maybe eight quarter or 
something a little bigger than that. We'll see. I think what I'll end up doing is I'll pull off the remaining slabs getting stacked, and then I can just take a look and see what I'm dealing with as far as embedment object in this lower section. I can always just roll it over and then take another cow of it once it's rolled over as well. But uh, I think at this point, it's just going to be a matter of getting the, uh, the slabs off the stack and onto the other stack, or I guess off the mill bed and stacked on the stack. You got uh, six slabs. Six slabs to move. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six slabs. So down here we got pretty well clear. A lot of really nice color and stuff down here. And to the middle we have these older limbs right here, which have a lot of nice crotch figures surrounding them. So that's a nice little accent here halfway up the log. And then when we get up through here, we start getting these two bullseyes, which are the two other of the large limbs coming up this way and that way. So we're getting into those. Those are revealing some more crotch figure here and this beautiful bark inclusion there from the last little bit of the two larger limbs there. Whew! That is beautiful stuff. All right, so now we're getting into the second shorter section of the log. Let's see what we got this time. Ooh. Oh, oh. So up here we've got, uh, we're starting to get into the two additional crotches, but we have a lot of really nice crotch figure coming right down through here. And a whole bunch of curl up top here, which is super nice. In the middle, We've got this kind of crazy, goofy thing going on. Block the sun. There's a bark inclusion with some crazy grain swirling all around there. An old rot. It's got a little old knot. It has a little bit of rot there, and some more little crotch figure right through there. Down here, nice and clean. <laughs> That's your, your clear stuff. A little bit of curl on the outside in the sapwood on the left and the right, and then that's the whole thing. It's a, this is. This is big. <laughs> this is a, a big piece of wood. So let's take a quick look. The stack is getting kind of tall. <laughs> ah. Well, that's beautiful. So there is the double bullseye with some crotch figure and stuff right there. Got some uh, interesting stuff happening over here. This is a kind of fun little rot pocket thing. Really fun figure right around this little knot or whatever that is there. And uh, yeah, it's some kind of like fun little dashings of interest down here on this end. Man, this stuff is uh, large. So that's five o'clock, so that means it is now family time. So I'm gonna go ahead in and I'll pick up with the rest of the stacking in uh, maybe tomorrow or the day after or something. Hey, Daddy! Coming up for the next two. Can, can, I'm gonna jump in. So while the kids were playing the sawdust last night, I was getting things staged, and as I pulled back the second to last slab, found. Uh, I had run into this apparently, which I never noticed. So there's a little, I guess that's probably like a decent sized nail, but I've cut it at a bit of a skew angle. So a good amount of material there to cut through. So I guess I cut through that and then I made the last cut. So let's uh, start looking at some slabs, I guess, so we can take a look at this last one and see what was in there. <laughs> First thing in the morning, dumping water on slabs. Ain't nothing better than this. Oh, I absolutely love the color in silver maple. It's got some of the nicest color variation I think of pretty much any wood, at least any of the common woods that I saw. That's pretty cool. There's some really cool gray streaking down here. But yeah, lots of like yellows and blues and reds and purples in the middle there and the heartwood, which is nice. Got a little bit of a rot pocket right here. So I got some old limbs that fell off and died at some point. And then things start getting really interesting down here where we have both those limbs 
and I have a nice little bit of crotch figure right here in the middle with the bark inclusion. And as I like the look of these bullseye type things in there. That's beautiful. It's a little bit of uh, curling and stuff through here too. So that side's pretty nice. All right, let's take a look at this next one. This is cool. We're through the, uh, the rot area now, so now the tree has kind of healed up itself. It's also solid again, and there's some really nice figure around that. So there's that spike or nail or whatever that I hit. I guess there was actually a second one because there's another one right there. So there's two in this pass. <laughs> so much steel in this tree. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is this thing. That is cool. I like this. A lot of cool color and figure there. And then up here, we got the double bullseye. We got a little bit of uh, kind of uh, figure there. And uh, yeah, just overall, some nice, nice colors. So let me pull back the next one and see what was in that one. Yeah, another uh, decent sized nail there. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> So much stuff in this tree. So I'm gonna head back to the saw and get the remaining part of the log flipped over and get that ready to be cut. For this last cut, since it's kind of a odd shaped piece, I'm just gonna cut this extra thick and then that can become you know, other smaller things in the future. Probably set the saw at about three and a half inches and make a cut there. And I'm just going to use the blades that are right on the saw, the one that's uh, missing a bunch of teeth and stuff. It should be able to cut through this just fine. The cut width isn't too extreme. I'm not too worried about cut quality on this thing since it is the top of the stack and since this would otherwise just be, you know, firewood or an off cut. All right, let's see if there's anything promising in this thing. So yeah, that blade is uh, pretty well done. <laughs> it did not like the width up here, so it dove quite a bit, or it rose and then dove and evened out again. So that blade is pretty well done, but I'm not super worried about it for this one because this being as thick as it is, my idea for this is be, uh, this would be cut up into turning blanks anyway. So I'm not too worried about cut accuracy on something like this. So it looks like we have a little bit of figure poking through here at the bottom of this limb. I think it's a little bit more on this side as well. And uh, it's an interesting green through here. And the rest is kind of, this is kind of the same. Down here we know this is kind of straight green and a little more on the boring side. It's a little bit of figure over there. But for instance, like this chunk right here, it's a, that's a bowl blank right there. So that's what this will probably end up being. So another log turned into a nice stack of slabs, a nice big bull. Uh, this was a fun one. I really enjoy personally when things don't go totally perfectly the whole time because it does make things a lot more interesting and a lot more exciting. And having pieces that have embedded steel inside of them just make for some more interesting things and just helps to tell the story of the tree just a little bit more. So we got that with 13 slabs here. 12 of them are at uh, about 10 quarter or so, a little bit heavy 10 quarter. And I have that last one there at about three and a half inches thick. So that would be 14 quarter. This is uh, quite the, uh, the stack of slabs. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the saw milling adventure. I know I did. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the, this thing, the sawmill, anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> Happy woodworking.